Eddie, Eddie, thank you very much. This Monday marks the new month of November. Mm -hmm. It's Diabetes Awareness Month, and that is a condition that affects a lot of families here in central Alabama. Yeah, so joining us now live with more on what you can do to prevent diabetes is our resident doctor, Dr. Celeste Reese Willis. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Reese Willis. Good morning. How are we? We're doing great. We're doing well. We're anxious to learn a little bit more about diabetes. Talk to us about some of the signs of this, because for those of us who don't have it, we need to be on the lookout. Absolutely. So the most common signs of diabetes include <clears throat> having frequent urination, having fatigue, having increased thirst. You can actually feel very fatigued without even excessively working. You can get blurred vision, tingling, numbness in the hands and the feet. You can have slow healing of cuts or wounds. That's a subtle sign. Uh, itching and yeast infections as well. Now, there may be people who are the type to go on WebMD and look up <laughs> symptoms who say, well, I have a few of those. What can people do to ensure their, to the best of their ability, preventing it? Well, the best thing that you can do is see your physician and get a blood test. We'll check your blood sugar fasting to make sure that you don't have diabetes. There's a lot of different blood work that we do, but typically a fasting blood sugar is what we check to determine if you're diabetic. All right, let's talk about food. What foods help lower or regulate blood sugar? Okay, this is a great question. So things that you wouldn't necessarily think of, broccoli, it has a substance in it called sulforaphane, and it's a chemical that when you chew broccoli or cut it up, it helps to decrease blood sugar. In addition to that, fatty fish or protein helps to regulate your blood sugar, and okra is a rich source of polysaccharides uh, that have been identified as compounds that can be used to lower blood sugar. So, this is random, but I boiled okra last night. That's, you did? So that's oh, helpful, right? Oh, yeah, Not good. fried okra. No, no, no. It was the stringy kind, you know, that so some I, people don't like. I can't go to Saw's Juke Joint and order fried okra ah. and count myself as, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's fried okra, more protein from fish, and broccoli. What was that? Can we get that again, Dr. Celeste? <laughs> so broccoli, fatty fish. I'm not going to say the fried <laughs> okra, Jack, because no. it would be better if it were not fried. Steamed would probably be better. What's the compound um, in broccoli, though, that you mentioned? The compound in the broccoli is sulforaphane. Okay. okay. It's a sulfa compound for sure, just the sulfa compound. How, how much does, uh, I know exercise is important no matter what, but moving around and all of that, will that adjust it at all, or does that affect uh, early onset diabetes or anything like that? Absolutely. Exercise is actually one of the things that we recommend that you do to prevent yourself from developing diabetes, especially if you have family history. It takes a few other things in addition to that, like environmental factors. What are you eating? Uh, what kinds of foods are you avoiding? Those play a major part in determining whether or not you become diabetic. Just because it's a part of your family history that doesn't mean it has to be you. And I wanted to bring up this one statistic that was kind of alarming. Between 2002 and 2015, the CDC discovered there an increase in the cases of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, in people that are younger than 20 years old. Oh. And experts have linked that to childhood obesity. In 1970, we had a third of the amount of children that were obese at that time. So today, one in five kids is considered to be obese. In 1970, it was a third that number. Mm. Wow. Important yeah, reminders. That's stunning. Yeah. For this month, but every month, important as we start a new month. Dr. Celeste, thank you very much mm -hmm. for another helpful and very insightful edition of CBS 42 House Calls. Don't forget, you can send your questions to the doctor. Just email those to housecalls at cbs42.com or message us on Facebook. Now let's get a check.